All right, I'm finally back. It has been a busy month. I had to go out of town for a funeral. Then I went to Anaheim to help out Skyfire um, with a trade show at West Tech. Then uh, we extended that trip and my wife and kids came to visit. We went to Disney for a couple days. Then I got sick from Disney. Then I had to travel out of town again to pick out a robot arm for my next upcoming project. Um, finally, I got some time to do some testing. Um, before that, let's take care of a couple updates and then we'll uh, get into the test prints. Let's go. I just spent some time setting up the automated function for controlling the oxygen level. And uh, JYM never did give me an English version of the software, so I had to make do with Google Translate. But uh, yeah, I think I got it figured out and I've tested it and it seems to work. One other thing I did, um, thank you guys for reminding me to calibrate the oxygen sensor. Um, now when it's in ambient air, it reads 20.5%. All right, so I think I'm ready to go ahead and try the first print. I'm not even worried about good print quality. I just wanna make sure all systems are go. So I'm not gonna worry about sieving the powder or drying it right now. Um, the things I need to do is add some more powder. I need to um, re-zero the build plate. Uh, I wanna go around and clean all the glass surfaces and the lens and make sure that's all clean from dust. Then I think I'm gonna try it. Let's turn on the water chiller and the laser. Now I need to go ahead and perch the chamber down to 0.1% oxygen. It seems that it doesn't really want to go much below 0.8%, so I guess we'll set that as our new target value. Alright, I'm hitting go. Let's see what happens. This has been running for a few minutes and it kind of started off bad from the beginning. Um, I reset the software and I forgot to raise the powder delivery bed so it started off right out the gate with not enough powder. It appears every layer it's not really covering the previously printed part like maybe the power is too high and it just looks like it's sticking up above where it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to just let this run for a little bit and see what happens. I left the oxygen sensor in auto range mode and now it's down to 0.31% because the range changed from 0 to 25% to uh, 0 to 1%. So it's not uh, sending the right signals to the controller and it's not adjusting the gas properly, but at least it's lower now. It looks like since there wasn't enough powder at the beginning, some of these support material structures aren't actually attached. And you can see the streaks in the powder where it's just moving them around where they're loose. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it because right now um, it's just leaving that argon valve open and I'm just wasting a lot of gas. Um, I think I need to put the oxygen sensor into uh, manual range mode so that it doesn't switch like this. Uh, it's kind of messing everything up. And uh, yeah, we'll reset everything and try this again. I've put my oxygen sensor into 0 to 25% range, so hopefully that shouldn't be a problem again. I used the brush to kind of clean this up. And you know what? I think it was actually doing way better than I thought it was. Um, it looks like maybe a couple of the support uh, rods detached, but for the most part, it looks like they're all there and just fine. So I guess I need to get this cleaned up uh, so we can try this again. Since I know these supports aren't well bonded to the build plate, I'm just gonna try to take a screwdriver and scrape them off rather than uh, removing everything and resurfacing the plate. I've scraped off those supports and then I gave it a quick filing. 
Hopefully this is good enough and I'm not just uh, sabotaging my uh, second attempt here. I went to prepare the powder and it looks like I may have damaged the silicone rod in that last print. It's leaving some scrape marks here. So I think I need to replace that before we move on. I've got the recorder blade removed and yeah, you can see it really chewed it up right there in the middle. So let me get that replaced and reinstalled. I think I just need to purge the oxygen and then we're ready to go for the second test print. Um, I've changed one parameter. I changed the laser power from 300 watts down to 200 watts. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure where to start with the parameters. I'm just relying on chat GTP. So who knows if it's giving me good info or bad. Um, so anyways, let me purge this and we'll give it a go. One other thing I'm not really sure about with the software is where I should position my printing bed at the start of the print. Do I want it set at zero so it's flat or do I want it down lower so it has um, the first layer covered with pad already? Um, I'm going to play around with this a little bit and, and understand what it wants of me. We're down to 0.9%. File's loaded, so I think we're ready to go. It looks like those didn't adhere to the build plate at all. All right, so maybe the answer is I need to start it at, uh, with the build plate at zero. That time I started it with a layer covered already. I went ahead and stopped the print. I'm gonna try to get a better first layer before we let it run. I'm ready to try again. The oxygen management seems to be working now. But um, yeah, I'm still struggling to get the first layer right. It's just not adhering to the build plate. So I got to figure that out because it looks like it's just pushing everything around once I started printing. I can't seem to get it quite right. This time I started the build plate too high and you can see it kind of ripped the silicone cord off at the edge over there um, where it got caught so it's not spreading powder at the end. Um, yeah, this is uh, pretty frustrating. So I've done four tests now. The first test was actually the best, but um, the oxygen purging wasn't working right. Um, I've got that sorted and it works great um, every other attempt I've tried now. But now I've yet to have a good first layer where it bonds to the build plate. Um, I've tried um, different laser powers and I've tried um, adjusting the starting position of the build plate and it's been wrong every time. So there's a number of variables. I'm not sure if uh, my laser power is not high enough and it's not sticking to it, or if I'm just not getting uh, the, be the bed position correct. I'm getting frustrated, so I need to stop for today. So I think I'll clear my mind and I'll take a fresh look at this tomorrow. I'm about ready to do take five. And uh, I was ready to remove the lens cap and I noticed this. Whoops. That could have accounted for one of our failures. Take five is a failure. Um, I tried raising the laser power up to 500 watts to see if I could get the first layer to attach well. And it seems like it's just kind of like bubbling up higher than it should be. And only after several layers, the silicone tube got stuck on there and it kind of pulled it out. Um, so you can see the powder is all messed up right now. So, all right, we will try again. So that test bonded really well to the build plate um, because I had too much laser power. Um, so I'm definitely gonna have to take out the build plate and resurface that before we can move on. Here you can see this better once I pulled out the build plate. Yeah, that bonded really well that time. Build plate is resurfaced. Now I just need to replace the silicone cord again on the recoder. We'll try this again. So that last attempt appeared to be just way too much heat. And I imagine that probably the last several of my tests were messed up because of this burning the lens cap and there was soot on the lens. So that was probably affecting everything. So I think I need to go back and, and try some previous settings again. I've been living in this strange dichotomy where I've been trying to be on the cutting edge of DIY machines, but I've been really slow to adopt AI technology. Um, this is the first project that I've ever utilized ChatGPT 
or anything like that to ask it some questions. And I thought, hey, I'll just try um, telling it my scenario and what's happening with the machine and see what it has to say. And so uh, I gave it all my parameters and basically it said my energy density is way too high and um, I'm over melting the powder causing it to swell up and that's why the recoder is kind of crashing on it every time. So um, I've used it before and it's given me completely false information but um, in this case I think it's at least worth giving it a shot and see what, what happens so uh, I'll take some of its advice and we'll try this again. I think we're ready for test number six. I have the build plate resurfaced. I have a new recoder silicone blade. Um, the oxygen has been purged. Um, I've set up my file with new settings from ChatGTP. Let's give it a shot. We're a few layers in and it looked like not all of the supports were attached. The majority are, but maybe one or two didn't attach. Um, again, I don't think I had the built surface uh, at the correct level whenever I started. Uh, I'm going to let this play out for a minute and see what happens. Nothing really catastrophic has happened yet. Um, the, the support beams that didn't attach are kind of getting pushed around, but the majority of them are still there. So I kind of want to let this play out until it gets to the solid layers and see if maybe um, you know it can recover at that point. Um, so I'm just going to let it run for a little bit. We're on layer 30. You can really see the support beams that are attached look very different compared to the ones that aren't. Um, the ones that aren't really ball up and it's getting dragged around and messing up the powder spreading. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to let this run and hopefully it won't mess up our powder too much until we get to a solid layer and see if it can recover at that point. We are at layer 90. Um, it looks like at this point, the majority of the support columns are detached, which is a bummer. Um, at layer 130 is when it actually starts the part um, with the solid layers. I'm gonna let it run to until it gets there, just to um, see what happens. That's really interesting, now that it's printing the solid layers, uh, it's, the part's clearly failed, but I'm just watching it to see what happens. It looks like um, some of the pieces are actually melting to the silicone wiper. I don't know if you can see them there, but they're attached to it. Um, so I'm not sure what that means. It looks like it's um, powder is kind of balling up more than actually fusing together. Um, so yeah, definitely some changes in the settings are needing. I'm really glad I went with this 3D printed recoder blade with the silicone cord. This thing has been taking a beating with my failed prints. And uh, you can see here, I think it's time to reprint a new one before we move on. I just printed a new one and I have a new silicone cord in there. So let me get this put back on the machine for the next test. All right, I've canceled this test. Um, same problem as before, it's just not sticking to the build plate, or maybe it is, but then the, the little pillars are getting knocked over. So maybe it's not so much that my parameters are wrong, maybe it's just my support structure. It's just not uh, great for this application. So let me rework a file with um, support material that's more rigid, and we'll give it another try. I asked ChatGTP about the poor first layer bonding and it gave several suggestions of one heated build plate but unfortunately i decided to forego that um, for this first build it suggested sanding the build surface with a fine grit sandpaper so i'll try that i also asked it about the doming and bubbling of the print layers 
Um, it thought one, the power density is probably too high, so I'll adjust that down again. And also it thinks that um, that could be caused by moisture. Well, I haven't actually dried out my powder yet, so I think now's probably the time to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the powder in the machine, sieve it. I have a little toaster oven here from back when I was trying to do vacuum forming. So yeah, I'm gonna try to dry out the powder and then get this all set up and try it again. I just opened up the side panel to retrieve the excess powder and I found something interesting. You see that pile right there? Apparently I have something up here that is not sealed well. And um, yeah, I'm leaking powder out right here. So um, maybe that explains why I was having trouble getting the oxygen uh, perched out all the way. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at this. Based on where that's at, I'm guessing it's the flange around this uh, powder recovery chute um, there on the inside that you can't see. So I think I'm gonna take that off and have a look. I'm gonna go ahead and sieve the powder that was in the container. It's not really sieving well and I took a closer look at the spec sheet for this powder and realized that the mesh is a little bit too fine in this one. Um, so I've ordered a new one and we'll revisit this. Look at this, I found the tiniest pinhole in this container where it's also leaking. Somewhere right here, I gotta fix that. I'm gonna dry this out at 225 degrees for three hours. And I'll just set uh, my alarm on my phone. I have some 320 grit sandpaper. I've got everything ready. I've sanded the build plate. I've dried my powder and reloaded it. I've created a new file with a more substantial base and support structure, and I've got some new parameters to test. So let's give this another shot. It still doesn't look like it's adhered well to the build plate. Yeah, it's just breaking it all off. Yeah, you can see it's knotted here and it's messing up the recoder blade. I was hoping we'd be getting our first test print in this video, but as you can see, that didn't happen. Uh, I was hoping they went uh, much better than planned. Obviously, I'm not gonna give up. I've got way too much invested in this project so far. Um, I still need to keep playing with the parameters and just get that first layer to adhere to the build plate well, and I think we'll get much better results. Um, so I'm going to keep working on that. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for sticking with me through this difficult and long project. We're going to get there, I'm sure. And also thank you to Skyfire for your support for everything. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.